Hey, welcome back. So this is part two of my state machine series. If you haven't watched part one, go, I'll put the link somewhere in the top here. So in this video, I'm going to create a state machine from scratch using React hooks. Of course, it's not going to have feature parity with XState because XState does everything, but I will create a simple version that can at least be used uh, in the with this very same config that I used for my timer. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, this is where we left on the last video. I created a stopwatch that is controlled by state machines. Uh, the state machine has three states. It can be idle, running, or paused. As I mentioned, in a state machine, in, in a finite state machine, all of these states are previously known. You declare them when you create the state machines and you cannot vary the states to any other different than these. And by doing that, I also, for each and every of these states, I declare the events that they listen to. So the idle state listen to the start event. And if it receives the start event by this send method here, it will the state machine will switch for the running state. The running state then listens for only for the pause event and transitions to the pause state. And the pause state listens to two events, reset, which goes back to idle, and start, which goes back to running. I also have entry callbacks, which performs the actual timer operation. So when I go to running, it actually starts incrementing the timer at an interval. Uh, if I go back to either idle or paused, I clear this interval and reset, maybe uh, reset the, the counter. So for now, I'm going to remove this here and I'm going to create my own use machine hook. Of course, in the future, it might live in a separate file in a separate package, but for now, I'm just going to create it right here. So function, use machine, it receives a configuration, and I want to give the same functionality that I was using uh, for next state. So what functionality is that? Let, let's list what this state machine should do. First, it should contain a piece of state, right? Which is starting at idle and should contain these strings here. So it should contain state. But it also contains these next events here, which is a list of all the possible events that these states can, can listen to. This is the right, actually derived state. If I have the current state string, I can derive that. But for simplicity's sake, I'll just say that my state should contain the current state string, and it should contain the next events. Uh, next, it should listen to events and transition states, which is the send function here. So every time I run send, I pass in the name of an event. And if that state listens to that event, it should make the transition. And finally, together with my states, I can declare entry callbacks. The third thing that I need to do is invoke entry callbacks. Great. Now, how am I going to do to go about creating this state machine? I'm going to start by using the hooks that React provides out of the box. So my first thought uh, would be to use use state to store that state that the state machine contains. But I'll actually go for use reducer. Because if you think about it, use reducer has quite some similarities with a state machine. Reducer, even Redux has some similarities with a state machine. It returns some state. Uh, it also gives you a method, a dispatch method to send events, to dispatch actions, pretty much the same thing. And the only difference here is that the state machines enforce which actions, which events you can send. Because if you're in a current state, like in idle state, if you send a reset event, nothing's gonna happen because the idle state doesn't listen to the reset event. So that's really the only big difference besides all of the callbacks and, and everything else. But to get started, that's the only big difference. So to get started, I'm going to use a reducer. So I'm going to say machine state and send, which I'm gonna use instead of dispatch, is going to be use reducer. I'm going to pass a function, which is my reducer and I'm going to pass some initial state. So let's create that, that initial state first. Post initial state. As I mentioned, it's going to be an object that contains a current 
that's going to be the current string, the string that represents the current state. So in my case, it's going to be the config for the initial state. It's going to be config.initial, right? This is the config. Oh, by the way, my use machine hook will just receive an object as configuration, not a machine instance. So it'll be like this. And this configuration object contains an initial string. So that's what I'm going to hold in my current for my initial state. And it also contains, as I mentioned, the next events. Which again, being a derived state could be generated out, could, doesn't need to be stored uh, in the state. I could just grab it uh, and calculate it whenever needed. But here for simplicity, I'm just going to put together with my state. So next events, how do I get that? Well. If I go to my state object that represents the, the, the current state, in my case, the initial one is idle. So how do I get that? I get config.states on this string, config.initial. So states of idle is this little guy over here. In there, I have the own, which points to an object containing all of the possible events. So, dot on. But what I really want is, I want this to be an array of the transitions, not an object, not this object here. I just want to have an array with, in this case, the start event. So I can do, I can do that by doing object dot keys of this string over here. And this should give me that array. So I'm going to start with this initial state. Now, a reducer gets the preview state and an event or action, and it returns a new state, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to check in my current state node, if it listens, if it responds to the event that's being passed. So to do that, I first need to access my state, the node containing my state. So, and, uh, so I'm going to do it like this. Uh, cost current state node is going to be the config.states on my current state value. Remember that this contains a string like idle or running. So if I call config.states on the string idle, it's going to return me this. Uh, then I'm going to say that const the next state, it's going to be the current state node dot on and the event that I passed. This is not a state. This is not a, re a regular reducer where the event is an object. The event here is just a string like start or pause. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if my state on if it has the event that matches, and if it does, it should return a string that corresponds to the next state. If it doesn't, this is going to be undefined. So now I need to check if this transition is existent, if, if this transition exists before actually performing a, a change in the state. So what I'm going to do is, if there is no next state, next state, I'm just going to return early with the old version of the state. Now, here's up to you what you want to do. You might throw an error if you want your, your state machine to be really uh, uh, enforcing the, the transitions that can happen. In my case, I'm just going to ignore and return the, the old state. But if the next state exists, I'm going to prepare the next state of my reducer, which should be something like this. Return an object that looks like this. The current is going to be the next state. And the next events is going to be the same thing. Object.keys of config.states of the next state dot on. So this should be enough to store one current state in the form of a string, listen to events. If the event that I'm receiving is available in my state node inside on, then I'll transition to whatever that event points to. Right? So number one is done. Number two is done. 
What I need to do now is invoke the entry callbacks. These callbacks there, we can imagine them as effects that runs after the fact that I changed the state. And React already provides me a hook to do that, which is use effect. So I'm going to bring use effect here, and I'm just going to use effect here. Uh, passing a function. And what's interesting is that this effect should run every time my machine state changes. If I want to be more specific, my machine state document. But really, anytime my machine state changes, I will run an effect. And what this effect does is it will try to identify the current state that I changed it to and check if it has an entry callback if it does invoke it. So the way to find out is I'm going to use something very similar to this current state node. The only difference is that now this is going to be the machine state dot current. I, I don't need to start it as again, I can do an entry directly and invoke it. Well, not really, because entry might not be defined. So the way to do is, uh, uh, I, I would have to wrap this inside an if statement, right? But I'm using Babel here, which means that I can use the latest features of JavaScript. So I'm going to use optional chaining. And what this is going to do is, it's going to check if these state nodes exists before trying to find entry. If it doesn't exist, it's going to return early with an undefined. And I can even do the same thing here with entry. Uh, check if entry exists first, and if it exists, invoke it. And I know that this looks weird, but this works perfectly. So yeah, that should be it. My state machine is done. I now invoke entry callbacks. Well, let's see if my server is running, and let's try it. Use machine is not a function. Line 35, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not returning this. Of course, my <laughs> hook is useless if I don't return something that I can use. Let's try again. There we go. Looks like it's working. Yeah. I can pause, restart, reset, and now I just created my own version of a state machine in what? 25 lines of code. All right, now I want to wrap up with some improvements uh, to the state machine. The first thing is, uh, if there is an entry callback, we can assume that there's also an exit one, right? X state does provide that. Uh, and we could as easily create an exit callback here. Uh, it will just be a matter of, in my use effect, remember that use effect already expects that you might return a function and this is a cleanup function that will be executed whenever this uh, state, in my case, changes. It will be invoked the cleanup first of the previous state and then the effect of the new state. So this use effect already gives this uh, for free for us. So I could just do something like this. And this should probably work. So let's see. I'm going to do an exit here. And in my case, I'm just going to say leaving idle. That's it. There you go. But because this is React uh, and I'm creating a hook specifically for React, we might as well make it make this more idiomatic. So what I'm going to do here is that my in my configuration, instead of providing entry and exit, I will provide an effect. And then I can pretty much use the same format that use effect uses, the same format that React uses. I will execute something and I can return a function that gets executed uh, when I get off. What is wrong here? Uh, so I'm going to rename these two effect. I'm going to rename these two effect. And here in my state machine, the only thing that I need to do really is return whatever I get from effect. 
might be undefined in the case of these ones here, or might be a cleanup function in this case here. And this should work just the same. Let's try. So yeah, we just implemented a small spectrum of X state and use machine from X state. Uh, that is already enough to create some powerful APIs. I have some bonus content for you that uses TypeScript in the end of this video, so the video is not over yet. But if you do like these videos, please subscribe and consider buying some merchandise like these t-shirts with some fun twists on the React logo. All right, let's get to the bonus section. All right, bonus content. I'm going to add TypeScript types to my state machine. Now, here's the thing. I'm fairly confident to talk about React and to talk about JavaScript in general, but I'm fairly new to TypeScript. So what I'm going to show here might not be the best way of doing things. Uh, so if you do know a better way, uh, or if you if you know TypeScript and, and think that I'm doing something wrong here, or if there's a better way of doing this, please add your comments so we can all learn with you. All right, so let's try doing this. Uh, I renamed, I already added the TypeScript config. I renamed this to a TypeScript uh, uh, React component. I imported the TypeScript typings and I fixed in my component the use ref to be a number. And that's my for my component, that's pretty much it. But for my use machine, I have a few things to fix. Let, so let's start by pieces, starting with the config. So let's create a type for the config. Let's call it machine config type or interfaces i kind of prefer types i know that they have an added overhead uh, at, at development time but uh I, I prefer to have a pretty much the same style for all of my types being an object or not so a state machine configuration it can contain let's ignore this id for now it can contain an initial which is a string initial It can also contain states. And states is really an object containing any type of keys that can be strings. And the content, the content is very specific. It has to have this on with an optional effect. So for that, let's create a separate type. Type machine state config and this has to be a machine state config good so what's the what does the machine state configuration have it has an on which is also an object whose keys are strings and for now let's just say that the transitions are strings we can refine this later. And it has also an effect. And the effect is something that is a function that receives no parameters. And does it return anything? Oh, really? It can return another function that returns void, or it can return void directly. And I have to wrap this in parentheses, right? Right. So yeah, this is a machine config. Now, here's the thing. I think one of the most powerful things about uh, TypeScript, especially when you're creating uh, uh, something that will be reused, is that it provides type completion, it provides auto-completion. Even if the user of this hook will eventually use it using JavaScript. If they're using VS Code, VS Code is always using TypeScript under the scenes, even if you're not in a TypeScript project to provide auto-completion. So if I write my hook or my piece of code in TypeScript, even JavaScript users will benefit from it. And what I want to do here is I want to use type inference as much as, much as possible, meaning that I would I just I want that my user if they use it if they use TypeScript to just provide the config without having to actually specify how the config look like, and the my the state machine will infer it and have make sure that both state and event must correspond to what the user has typed in the config. Uh, if I say that this config is always going to match this type here, 
uh, type inference will be turned off. So what I need to do is I need to use a generic. So I need to say that my config is some config that it's going to get inferred. And this configuration needs to match at bare minimum this thing here. And the way I say in TypeScript that a generic needs to at least be like this is by using the keyword extends. So a config extends machine config meaning that it can be anything that at least follows this shape here. It can contain additional stuff, but at least it needs to conform to this. And now I can say that my config is actually, actually a config. So now I can start doing some TypeScript magic to start inferring things from this specific configuration that the user provides. So the first one is I want to get all the possible states. So I'm going to create a type state. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say that state is key off my conf config type inside states. So now I can type my initial state. I can create a type machine state current is going to be one of the possible states. And next event, well, for now, let's just say the next event is any type of object. We can refine this later. So it contains any types of keys and the value for now, let's say it's any. So this initial state is going to be of type machine state and my reducer accepts a state of type machine state. Another thing that is wrong here is that because of what I'm returning here, TypeScript thinks that this can be an array of any machine states and sends in any order and not a tuple, which the first with only two items, the first one being the state, the second one being sent. So I'm going to do an S here to cast this correctly as a tuple of machine state as the first item and send, I'm just going to say type of send right now. Let's cast this as string for now, both here and here. And the event, oh, sorry. Let's say that it's a string for now. So everything's passing and my send can send a value, which is a string. Cool. Next, I want to get a similar type that gets, instead of getting all of the possible states, it gets all of the possible transitions. And this is going to be a little trickier to do. Uh, I can do type event. It's going to be config of states. States on, right? Which is this guy over here. States on can have can be an object containing many keys. So I want the keys of this on object. And this will sound a little bit crazy, but what I want to do is I want to do E off config states in on but with config states on in front of it yes that should be it so i should be able to now say that my reducer gets an event The event is of type event. Now this is going to complain. So I'm going to do some casting here. Just I'm just just for now I'm going to say as any just so you can pass. Uh, I'll fix this later. And what I want to do here is really 
say that that the send, which is this react dot dispatch thing, I can instead of saying type of send, I can I can do react dot dispatch, and react dot dispatch expects me to say what types dispatch can send. So here it's going to be event. So if I did this correctly, now I should be able to say that sends only sends. Hmm. I think I have a additional bracket there that I don't need. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. Now it's getting an union of objects, not the keys. So I might need to create an auxiliary type here. So let's say type key of object or something expects some sort of object. And then I can say key of object if the object extends meaning that if it looks like this let's just put on the same line so if it does look something like this i'll return the key of object otherwise i'll return never So let's see, I don't even know what I'm doing, but oh yeah, it works. So now I can say that send only accepts one of these. What about my next event? Does it know? No, it, it, it doesn't know yet that uh, it, ex it contains only the transitions now what is what are the transitions the transitions oh, this is actually wrong because next event is an array it's an array of events right so it should be something like this uh why is it complaining i can say that this is an array of strings but the moment i say that this is an array of events Everything breaks. I can cast this here, and that's okay. But something really weird happens here. I may need to cast it here too. Oh, there we go. There we go. I was complaining because I was trying to return a state that didn't match the machine state. So if I did this correctly, the includes now knows that it only includes these items here, and I cannot possibly include, include strat. There we go. But it does include start. So yeah. Not my specialty here. If you know a better way of doing this, <laughs> please do help us. But yeah, now I have a state machine that uses TypeScript and offers type inference based uh, on my machine configuration. <laughs>